Today I've got some tips on painting a very large painting with lots of tiny detail. Today I'm gonna to be sharing some layering tips and give you some advice on getting something this busy. I keep pointing over here because that's where it's hanging on my wall. You guys wouldn't know that though, so I should probably stop doing that. You may see something like this with tons of detail and think it's too much, it's too hard. It's really not. I'm gonna show you how today or why today. You're not here for grammar. If you are supporters over on Patreon, I've got six hours of footage of this if you wanted to follow along with me there. Link is in the video description. My first tip for you on painting something like this is to layer. Don't try to just put the right color in the right place. I'm not just going to put orange over the blue. Well, and for one thing, the orange would be too translucent, it wouldn't show. Notice I put the white down first and then the orange on top of that. Notice the layering process throughout this because that really is what this is all about. This isn't paint by number where you just put orange where you want orange and, and purple where you want purple. It's really not gonna come out looking very good in that case. We want to just continuously layer and you're going to have a lot of layers that do not look good. That is okay. You're going to layer until it looks good. Don't give up thinking, oh, it's just terrible. I'm going to stop right now. And when you do feel like that, that's normal, by the way. So don't feel like that means you're not good or you shouldn't be confident in yourself. We all, every single painting I go through, there is a stage or multiple stages where I absolutely hate it. But the point is, you're just going to continuously layer until it looks good. I've seen far too many times where students give up when they hit those ugly layers. Those ugly layers are a part of the process. They are absolutely normal. This is not a paint by number. It's going to go through some 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 stages, some unfortunate stages. Now notice as I paint these orcas, look at the color shift. The closer to the water surface, the lighter I want them to be. I don't want to just make black above and below water. One of the tricks that I can do in this case to make them look like they're in the water is to use the colors of the background water on them, even the black portion. The, the closer to the surface, the lighter they are going to be. And I'll still pull black in there. You can see uh, towards the bottom of the tail there. It's not that I'm not using that, but I'm using a lot of these aquas and blues. Same thing with the white. We don't want the white to be flat white. The white is going to be reflecting the colors around it. What colors do you use? Whatever colors your water is underwater. If you've got like purple underwater, I've done that before, pink underwater, then I want my whites and my blacks to have a lot of that pink and magenta in it. Whatever your background colors are, is it's various shades of that that you want on your subjects here. And that's gonna go a long way into making them look like they're in the water and not just a sticker cut out from another scene and slapped on here. Now, the brush strokes that I'm doing, you can see they're really, really smooth. One of the reasons for that is the canvas I'm using is so smooth. This is a Fredericks Belgian linen canvas. And just for transparency, I am sponsored by Fredericks. They provided me with this amazing canvas that I'm using here today, but they were also the only canvas brand I used before, so no difference for me there. But this canvas, the point is, very, very smooth. And so that's going to make it easier to get tiny, tiny detail and smooth blending. If you're struggling with that in your canvases, a smoother canvas may be the solution for you. Got some coral. I want this to look like it's just off in the distance. And I'll end up glazing some blues or airbrushing blues in my case over it to push them back even farther. Now, if this is moving way too fast and you want to, to actually follow along, you can sign up over at Patreon for as little as $4 a month. You get access to all of my longer videos. There are six hours of footage on this video here, and I have a new one every single week along with the 300 you get instant access to when you sign up. You can see what I have available over on my Patreon video library. The link is in the description. I've also got two new tiers over on Patreon, the two highest tiers now. You get a coloring page each week. So here is the coloring page that went with this painting. Back to the painting, we are working on the sea turtle now. Look at some of these terrible layers we're gonna go through. Some really ugly layers, and if that's okay, it's supposed to look that way. I'm pulling a lot of those background colors, so I'll pull the purples and the blues, just like I did with the orcas. I wanna pull those colors into the subject. So I'm starting with more of the greens, but watch as I, I continue to build up. I'm going to pull a lot of blue and teal into his shell, onto his arms, and this is also going to help him feel like he's in the water. 
One of the tricks that I do on sea turtles is to make them look more three-dimensional. I'm going to be glazing more of the blue or whatever your background color is over the fins and the shell and his face is going to have more of the true colors, the whites, the creams, the browns and oranges, less of my background color. And that makes it feel like the face is just reaching out at the viewer. I am pushing back the shell and the arms or the fins by glazing the background watercolor more over those than I do the head. Now watch as I continue to build detail. Now the detail, you can look at something like this and think, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming. That's just too much. I'm never gonna be able to do that. It is easier to make that look good because your detail can be completely wrong. And one area that you kind of screwed up, you, the viewer's not gonna notice it if, if it's super busy or usually are not going to be as likely to notice it, I should say, as if, if it's super busy. Let's say I painted a single orca and the fins were kind of off or the lighting didn't look right. If that's all that's there, any errors or anything that you just don't love, it, it stands out like a sore thumb or a sore fin in this case. But because I've got so much detail, it's one, very easy to hide mistakes. So let's say I had, and I actually did on him, I at some point smudged red all across his face. It's so busy, I was able to hide that. You can't tell in the finished painting. I mean, I know where it was and where I covered it, but it is the average viewer is never gonna notice where I got that big blotch of red on his face. So you can hide mistakes very well, whether that means you paint over them or they're just not as noticeable because everything else is so busy. The thing is, it's very time consuming. So you need to know when you go into something this busy that it is going to take a long time. And like I just had on that C pen there, you're gonna have some bad layers that come out kind of unfortunate. I'm just gonna repaint that and keep layering until it looks good. The point going back to the time, it's important for you to know that these things take a long time. When I first started doing marine life, I thought I could get the, an entire coral scene, the whole underwater scene would be done in two hours. Yeah, no, that's weeks of worth. Each individual coral takes two hours. I can't do the whole scene. Once I realized I needed to slow down, take my time, really focus on that detail, I was able to create work that I honestly was shocked at myself that I was able to create it. And it really was, wasn't that I was suddenly more skilled, it's that I suddenly slowed down, that I suddenly started paying attention to these teeny, teeny, tiny details and putting that level of work into it. It's tedious. It's not a terribly exciting thing because it you don't get a whole lot done very fast. It's obviously a lot. It's more fun to have something done quickly. I get that instant gratification thing. But when you want to create work like this, slowing down, going into it, knowing that you have to go slow, that you're not going to get it done quickly is going to set you up for more success than going into it thinking, I'm going to get, I'm going to knock this out overnight. It'll be done quick. Not if it's going to look good. And that's a lesson, no matter what it is you're painting or drawing, it's a very important one to, to understand it. Just spending more time in your work, that may be the thing that'll make a night and day difference in your stuff. Now, a lot of the reference photos that I got, many of them, like this octopus came from Unsplash or Pixabay, but I also got a lot from my friends over at the Humble Fish Forums. If you are a fish keeper or aquari aquarist, aquari I don't know, you have saltwater fish, check out that forum. I'll put a link in the description. But a lot of these fish, the members there sent me photos so that I could include them in my painting. So that's tons and tons of fun. This yellow one coming up in just a moment and that one I just pointed at, those are both fish from members over there too. But this is a collage of, like I said, maybe a hundred photos. The same with the coral. Some of the coral photos came from the members over, over at Humble Fish. But it's a lot of photos. You're basically making a collage. If you've watched some of my videos where we did a collage where we just put a bunch of photos together, that's all I'm doing here. Now the trick is that you need to make them feel like they go together. So notice that they'll start overlapping each other to a bit. And then at the very end of the painting, I've got to make sure that I create some depth in this work. Right now I'm painting everything in a, a fairly flat manner. Everything feels like it's the same distance from the viewer to the back of like the water, like it's all right up close. I need to make it feel like it's slowly fading out. From up close, the color will stay more bold, but as it moves off in the distance, all I need to do is glaze some of my background, the background watercolor, that blue. I just need to glaze a little bit of that so it, it's darker blue the further away from the viewer it gets. And it is an easy way to have depth in your work just when you're doing underwater scenes. Just remember with underwater scenes, you want to make it look like stuff farther away is in deeper water. Glaze your background color over it. It is the easiest way to get that perspective. 
Now, another tip I have for you, if you are working on something where you want a lot of detail, the bigger you go, the more detail you can easily get. If you're trying to get a ton of detail in a teeny, teeny, tiny canvas, that, I, I mean, I've seen it done, I don't think it's fun. It's not something I enjoy. And my eyes also can't see that small. But if you want something that does have more detail, work larger. Again, goes back to the whole that more time consuming thing, but it will allow you to get smaller detail. And let's say I wanted even smaller detail than what I have here. Then I'm probably going to do a study where it's just a close up of one coral and one fish. And then I can get tons and tons of little detail. And even then it can be maybe an 11 by 14. It doesn't have to be this big. But if I want tons where I'm seeing this each scale of the, the fish, the detail around the gills, like that level of detail, then I'm going to go with where I'm just zoomed in on one area, like a study. So that coral there, that's a mushroom. That's actually one from my tank and these little zoas with the orange frill you'll see in a moment, those are out of my fish tank as well. Mine aren't that big, hopefully someday. I'm just adding more layering. See right now how flat that looks where the orange is? Once I glaze blue over por portions of that, it'll make it look like it's farther away from the viewer. It'll make such a difference in the depth of the piece. So this coral is kind of funny because it just, I could not make it work. The coral itself as a standalone coral, I loved how it looked. However, the fish that I'm painting above it, not this one here, that's actually my Royal Grama. That's one of my photos. But anyway, the fish that I'm going to paint above it is a pyramid butterfly. And he was just getting lost in that coral. It didn't, he didn't stand out enough. And so I had to keep fussing over it and layering. I kept trying to glaze over that coral. This, this is the fish that was getting lost right here. What I ended up having to do is go back. I kept stepping away from the painting and coming back and looking at it and trying to figure out, you see I'm trying to glaze to tone it down, didn't work. I ended up putting some more fish underneath it and it worked. So that coral can work as off in the distance, but it just did not work with the rest of the painting. So sometimes you win some, you lose some. And that was definitely not one of the win some sides. This is another coral. These zoas came from one of the members over at Humble Fish too, and I couldn't make that color work. They're beautiful as a standalone, but they were not blending well with the rest of the painting. So like I was saying before, you're doing a collage of a lot of things. You need to make them work together. And that was one where I had to keep re-glazing over it and toning them down. They were just too green and too yellow. Some more mushrooms here. That's another mushroom out of my tank. Look how ugly some of these layers are. Watch what happens as I keep adding detail. These little fish are fun. They hide in crevices. It's a tail spot blenny. So he's sitting in a shell. They're actually fairly small. He wouldn't, they wouldn't be this big and up against those mushrooms, but it's okay. He's cute. There's some coral back here. So I glazed blue over it. It pushed it back. And I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Watch once I put the blue over it, how it makes it look like it's farther in the distance. And all I'm doing is glazing my background color over it. Now, if you're thinking, you keep saying glazing, what does that mean? I'm just making, I'm thinning my paint out with water. So my more translucent colors, like my orange, red, yellow, purple, blue, any of those colors, I thin them out with water. So they're very translucent and just then glaze or wipe that paint on top of the details that I previously did so it tints the color. I can still see all the details underneath, but it adjusts the color. And I'm going to do that a lot on these guys. So we've got the copper banded butterflies. These are from some of the humble fish members as well. I'm going to go back and forth with the oranges. I'll darken up the orange with a bit of magenta. Little tip for you, if you need to shade your yellows or oranges, don't use black. You will get a horrible muddy color. When you shade your oranges or add a shadow to oranges and yellows, try purples and violets instead. Those will almost always look better. I ended up having to repaint this fish after I did all of this detail because I just didn't like how he was coming out. So I had to paint over him and try another technique, which I don't have the video for, but it happens to anybody, no matter how experienced you are, you're going to have times where something just doesn't work out. You paint over it and move on. It's no big deal. Don't get frustrated. Just take a little break and repaint it. There's some bubbles in there. And there is the finished painting. I got this done in about two weeks. It should have taken me four, but this one is going over my own saltwater tank. And I was super excited to get this finally pretty much finished up my office. It had 
been bare on that wall for way too long. This tank's been sitting here for six months or running for six months and I didn't have any pretty paintings around it. So that is what this one is for. And I do have prints available of it. I will have a link to that in the video description. So here is a quick tour of my office where I do all of the video editing, much of the live streams. Unfortunately, the lighting in here, it is really hard to record. I just put these little guys up last night under the frame. I had that video from a couple of weeks ago. There is Blitch's house, my collection of the retro My Little Ponies, because I'm an adult. There is the painting on the wall. The color looks off in this video and the tank, the lighting. I have not learned to get good footage of that light, the tank. It's beautiful in person, less so on camera. I've got my coral quarantine. You can kind of see it in the background. The light's not on that yet. There is the tank. I had just turned the lights on so my coral are all, and my fish are all still sleeping, but you get an idea of the way that I hung the painting. I've got that circle one up in the corner of the wave. It doesn't look good. I've got to put a square. I don't like the circle there at all. I'm going to do a larger square painting, but I'm going to have to actually paint it first. I'm not sure. So I guess I should say my office isn't completely done because that certainly needs to be changed, but I'm really happy with the way that the light hits the canvas above it. I was afraid with how much varnish I put four coats of a high gloss varnish on it. I was a little afraid that it wouldn't show up well, but it, it looks beautiful above the tank. There are one of my cleaner shrimp. Here are two more cleaner shrimp in my coral quarantine tank. As soon as they see me, they go, this is where the hole is in the tank where the food comes in. Look at them begging. They just want food. That is all I'm, I am good for as far as they're concerned is I, I am the food lady. Put the food in. Put it in. Feed me. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's around has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, YouTube probably still won't notify you when new content goes up, but it still makes me happy when people subscribe. Also, make sure to check on the bell notification icon. You're more likely to get a no notification with new content then. I've got new videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday.